Throughout history, there have been people who have committed some of the most heinous crimes fathomable. For those crimes, they have been convicted and sentenced to death. Welcome to Death Row Executions, where we take a look into the lives of society's worst offenders. And now, your host, Air. Born in 1970, Cherie Louise Rhodes was 44 years old in 2014, living in Cedarville Rancheria, California, working as a tribal convenience store slash gas station employee. She was also Cedarville Rancheria's tribal leader. For some background information, Cedarville Rancheria is a 26-acre federally recognized tribe in Modoc County, California that was founded in 1914. When it comes to tribal law, Cedarville Rancheria members are governed by a community council and the tribal headquarters are about 20 miles away from Cedarville Rancheria. The tribal members must be over the age of 18 and there is a chairperson, a vice chairman, a secretary, and other members who sit in on meetings. When Cedarville Rancheria was first founded, it had only six residents. By 2010, there were 13 inhabitants, and by 2014, when Cherie was the chairwoman, there were 35 registered members. Out of the 35 registered members, 20 were the relatives of Cherie's. Although Cherie was a chairwoman and popular in the tribe, she was known as the town bully and had no friends. Her relatives didn't even want her around. She was not a kind person at all, and her demeanor was not forthcoming either. She had many tattoos and would always wear bright tank tops to show them off. Not one person in town had a kind thing to say about her. One tribal member by the name of Sandra Perriott said that Cherie bullied her way through life. She was very different than the tribal community that was meant to be self-sufficient, supportive, and welcoming. Cherie had only been in Cedarville Rancheria for 20 years. She arrived in 1994 with her late mother, Virginia Sweeney, her son, and her brother, Rurik. Sandra Perriott said that Cherie worked her way into leadership of the tribe. She claimed that Cherie was, quote-unquote, always loud and kept pushing and plowing to get her way. I sure wouldn't have wanted to be her neighbor. She took pretty good care of her kid, but I don't know that she had any friends. She had family, but family aren't always your friends. Sandra's sister Penny didn't have the best thoughts about Cherie either. You did not want to get on her bad side. She was always ready to share a joke, but she had a powerful personality. She claimed that her brother Rurik was very easy to get along with though. In late December, early January of 2014, tribal members were growing weary of Cherie because they believed she was stealing their federal grant money. About $50,000 in federal grant money was missing and Cherie was being investigated by federal officers. Investigators were looking into whether Cherie's embezzlement allegations were true or not. Not only was she being investigated by federal officials, the tribal members and the tribe's lawyer proposed an eviction meeting to take place to resolve the issues. The investigation was the talk of the town and multiple inhabitants were interviewed by investigators. Because of the drama, the tribal members no longer wanted Cherie as their chairwoman. 47-year-old Sheila Russo, who was the tribal administrator, was in charge of tribal evictions and was going to be at the meeting because they felt that not only should Cherie no longer be chairwoman, but her and her son should be evicted from the tribe. To be evicted from tribal land was one of the most severest criminal punishments handed out, and 50-year-old Rurik Davis, who also happened to be Cherie's brother, is the one who initially came up with the idea that Cherie needed to pay for her crimes and be evicted. When Cherie got word that everyone in town was conspiring against her, including her own flesh and blood, she grew angry. She thought her brother Rurik especially went too far. On February 10, 2014, Cherie was with her nephew Jason Penn, but she dropped him off at a cousin's house before continuing on to the meeting at the tribal headquarters in Alturas. The headquarters was located about one block from the police station in a residential area. Before Cherie got there, the tribal members had already decided that Rurik would be the new chairman. As soon as Cherie walked into the headquarters, she pulled out a gun and started shooting. When she ran out of bullets, she grabbed a sharp object and injured someone with it. Cherie successfully shot and killed her brother Rurik Davis, her niece Angel Penn, her nephew Glenn, and tribal administrator Sheila Russo. Sheila was the only tribal member killed from the meeting that was not related to Cherie. Cherie also wounded two of her brother Rurik's daughters. One daughter suffered significant injuries and was in critical condition after Cherie ran after her into the parking lot of the headquarters. One woman who was uninjured but covered in blood ran to the city hall nearby to report that people had been shot and killed. 
When police arrived, Cherie was still holding a sharp object and running outside of the building. Police, along with a tribal worker, ran after her and finally tackled her to the ground. She was put in handcuffs and locked up in an undisclosed location. The reason for this was because working at the nearest jail, Modoc County Jail, was her victim Sheila's husband. To avoid any conflict or more violence, Cherie's location was initially not disclosed. Jacob Penn, Cherie's nephew, was raised by Cherie after Cherie's sister gave him up. He considered Cherie to be his mother, and the two victims that Cherie killed, Angel and Glenn, were his siblings. Jacob claimed that Cherie just snapped under pressure because her own brother was trying to evict her. The U.S. Bureau of Indian Affairs sent a team to the tribe to provide grief counseling for anyone wanting it because nothing like what Cherie did had ever happened before. While Cherie was locked up, a California judge in California ruled that there was enough evidence for Cherie to stand trial for murdering four people and attempting to murder two more. During trial, the court was able to see the actual video footage of the shooting because there were cameras rolling in the headquarters. One survivor by the name of Hedy Budga was quoted saying, I was in the middle of the room and I survived because my friend and former roommate Sheila Russo grabbed me and threw me on the ground and I ended up playing dead. At the conclusion of trial in December of 2016, Cherie was found guilty on four counts of first-degree murder and two counts of attempted murder. She was sentenced to death. After the verdict, District Attorney Jordan Funk was quoted saying, I thought it was the right verdict. I thought it was a courageous decision by the court. I don't think it was an easy decision by the judge. The judge also denied a defense request for a retrial, and I think the court was absolutely correct to steer clear of that. The judge ordered the Modoc County Sheriff to transport Cherie Rhodes to San Quentin Prison within 10 days of her sentence. Male death row inmates in California spend their time at San Quentin, but female death row inmates are transferred to the Central California Women's Facility in Chowchilla, California. To date, 53-year-old Cherie Rhodes is still on death row at CCWF after being admitted on April 20, 2017. Her inmate number is WF7290. Thank you all for watching another episode of Death Row Executions. Let me know what you guys think of this story in the comments below.